Turtle Wow. You probably heard that name before, and today you're going to hear about it again. Turtle Wow is a community project WoW server that has been absolutely popping off lately, becoming a household name in the vanilla WoW community, especially when it comes to Classic Plus or Vanilla Plus, as this is a WoW server set in the vanilla WoW universe with additional content, and it's possibly the closest reality we have to Classic Plus right now. In this video, I want to go through what Turtle Wow is, for those of you that may have heard about this name somewhere and have no idea what it refers to, or maybe you have heard about Turtle Wow and or you have somewhat of an idea of what it's about but you want some more information, well this video might just be the one for you. Turtle Wow has gained a lot of attention lately, some videos worth noting here are for example videos from McDoubles, one of which got close to 200k views, another one from Nixium where he talked about what Blizzard can learn from private servers, in which he verbally named Turtle Wow, and you also have Hamster Wheel who covered this server in a recent topic or a recent video. And something some of my newer subscribers might not know, I have covered this server before. Over a year ago I made a Turtle Wow review that has steadily been gaining traction since then, and I also want to shout out Rask, who made a fantastic video on Turtle Wow recently, and I've seen you in my comments before, so just in case you're watching this one, your content is absolutely brilliant, keep it up. So as I mentioned, I've played Turtle Wow before, i played it on and off, and I made my first video on it over a year ago, and I haven't really been talking a lot about it since then. It has just been something that I can enjoy in the background, and just play for fun. Today I thought I would make an update video on Turtle Wow considering its recent spark in popularity, and me getting a lot of questions about it, and there will probably be more videos about Turtle Wow coming out very soon as well. So let's get into it, what is Turtle Wow? Turtle Wow is a community project set in the vanilla WoW universe, featuring a lot of, of additional content or custom made content, imagine classic WoW but you also have high elves and goblins for example, two new playable races that fit into the vanilla WoW universe, and they both come with their own custom starting zones and quests. Right from the start you really feel that this server has something special, those two new playable races and the fact that the starting zones feel like actual starting zones it really gives you a really good first impression of the server by itself. When you log into the server you also get put into a new commerce guild automatically, in which you can ask questions about the server and usually get help if you need, and it also shows, it shows you how many new players are actively joining the server, giving you a very optimistic look on the server itself. And to be honest, even a year ago this server felt amazing, I talked about that in my review one year ago, it really felt amazing, and since then the popularity has gone up by a huge amount, so if it felt, if it felt popular back then, I'm just going to tell you, it is absolutely awesome right now. Now for those of you who might who know about the hardcore leveling challenge from Classic WoW, this exists on Turtle WoW as well, and in my opinion, a superior form if you ask me, where if you die, that's it, you are now a perma ghost. You also have a similar guild for hardcore where the second you activate hardcore mode, which you can do through a mysterious NPC in the starter zone at level 1, you now get thrown into a guild called Still Alive, and the hardcore community on Turtle Wow is absolutely insane, it's really on par with the hardcore community we have on Classic Era, which I think is quite insane for a community server. Turtle Wow uses Classic Wow or Vanilla as its core, but makes numerous improvements, adjustments, and additions to the game. Let's talk about a couple of them. So first, there's more class and race combinations. For example, we now have Human Hunters, Undead Hunters, Gnome Hunters, Troll Warlocks, and Orc Mages. You also have class balancing, making classes more enjoyable from early levels, and more balanced in the late game. For example, I have recently started leveling a Retribution Paladin, and this time it's not just an auto attack machine like it was in Classic WoW, you now get Crusader Strike already at level 8 or 10, I don't remember exactly which one of those two, but you get Crusader Strike really early. That being said, Crusader Strike by itself has also been reworked, or reworked, so it deals very little damage by itself, but increases the holy damage taken by the mob, stacking up to 5 times. 
You also have Holy Strike, which you learn by completing a Paladin quest later down the line, I think closer to level 15, and Holy Strike deals pure holy damage, meaning stacking 5 stacks of Crusader Strike, then doing a Holy Strike creates a big hitting damage combo for Red Paladins. You also have a new profession, or well, yeah, at least one new profession, called Survival, and this is a profession you can learn in Stranglethorn Vale at the Nessingwary camp as a secondary profession, and this is a profession you can use to basically craft survival utilities. One example of a crafted item is Adventurer's Tent, and another one is a Fishing Boat which increases your fishing skill, and upon getting to 75 skill in survival, you also unlock something called Gardening, which allows you to make seed planters and grow, co cro grow crops, turning seeds into vegetables and food, usually for stat increases and usable for raiding, basically food buffs. So, I just mentioned that the adventurous tents which are craftable through survival, those tents can be placed anywhere and while standing in that tent, you now gain rested experience, and you gain it quite quickly. You can even stack tents on top of each other, but crafting a tent has a 2 hour cooldown, so stacking them on top of each other requires teamwork. This creates a very interesting dynamic that helps show off the popularity of the survey, as people meet up in two main locations for these tents, Goldshire for Alliance and Crossroads for the Horde, and sometimes there will literally be over a hundred people standing under these tents. It kind of creates this gameplay dynamic of meeting up, accruing rested experience experience, then going out in the open world and questing until you spend all that rested experience for them to meet up again. It gives the entire server, or especially those that are leveling, an official meeting point and a gathering social place, which is actually quite awesome. You also have access to a specific mount at early levels, and don't let this deter you, you get access to a turtle mount at level 18. This mount is only available while the Dark Moon Fair is up, and its movement speed is based on your level, and it's the percentage number of half your level, or at least that's how I think and how I that's how I think it works. So if you're level 20, the mount will move at plus 10% speed, and basically the higher level you are, the faster that move that mount moves. But it's a very slow mount. It's a turtle. I just wanted to mention that so you don't get thrown off when you see someone under level 40 using a mount. Also, there's new quests. Turtle WoW has many custom made quests, and you will start seeing these ones very early, even in the starter zone, and you have at least one custom quest for each race in that starter zone. And in Goldshire, I found at least four new custom made quests, and there's new quest hubs all around the place, like for example, Alliance finally has a quest hub in the Swamp of Sorrows, a zone that was pretty much only horde based before, as well as an additional quest hub in the wetlands and you even have a small alliance island outside of the barrens, offering some low level quests to the alliance over there as well. Next up then, new zones. For example, you have two islands to the northwest of Stranglethorn Vale, which are themed around that same jungle theme, offering another place to quest in the early level 50s, and you also have a brand new zone north of the western plaguelands, which is the High Elf City. New dungeons, both for leveling and for endgame, really fantastic made dungeons with custom mobs, very interesting layout, beautiful locations, and it fits into the World of Warcraft vanilla universe. The Karasan Crypts and Stormwind Vault for example, two highly sought after dungeons in vanilla WoW that we now finally have access to as level 60 dungeons, and they are just fantastic. Having done both dungeons, I can also tell you they really offer you a challenge, especially as a new player, and it builds upon what Vanilla WoW does best, showing you the dangers of the world and reminding you that you are just a normal person exploring the world of Azeroth. There's also a bunch of new items added to the game obtainable through world drops, quests, dungeons, or even professions, and here's a couple worth highlighting. For example, you can get two green trinkets at level 12, one for each faction, and in regular classic WoW I believe you didn't get a trinket until something like level 40, while over here you start getting trinkets really early. It's not insane, it's just a fun little change. You also have this trinket available at level 16, which you can get at the Alliance Island outside of the Barrens, like I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video. 
You also have some other very interesting trinkets, like this epic world drop, or in this mana spring totem trinket, or in this agility trinket with stealth detection, or in this strength trinket with a healing on use effect. And for you feral druid enjoyers out there, this epic version of the manual crowd pummeler, giving you a reusable version instead of having to farm Nomaragon over and over and over and over again. Turtle WoW is essentially a RP slash PvE server. This is, that is what they are advertise themselves as, but if you're into world PvP, don't let their server type discourage you. They offer something called War Mode, which is an opt-in PvP system, and they encourage people to play with War Mode active by increasing the experience yield by 30% while playing with War Mode on, giving you an incentive to level up in a PvP environment. That being said, you cannot turn War Mode on and off like you want to. You have to make a choice. You can turn War Mode on, and you can turn it off once. The next time you turn it on, it's on permanent. So what I would recommend is you use war mode while leveling, and then decide if you want to keep having PvP enabled, or if you want to switch to PvE at max level. Keep in mind, this decision will be permanent. So, that was a lot of information in one video, but let's do a recap. Turtle WoW is a community server based on vanilla WoW as a core, with further development, adding new content, new zones, new quests, and new items, as well as additional class and race balance combinations, and class balancing, and a new profession called survival. The server itself is a RP slash PvE server, with optional war mode offering world PvP for those who want it. There's also a lot more to the server itself, but I believe that should give you a decent idea, without spoiling too much of the fun, and then you can find out the rest for yourself. That is pretty much it for today's video though, if you enjoyed it, please consider boosting the algorithm by slapping a like on the video, and leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more, even more content. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. A turtle made it to the water!